All right, guys, good evening and welcome. Again, my name is Rafi, and today we're going to talk about settling in Canada, finding and holding a job. Please stick around for later. We have a great offer for you. And please don't forget to share so that more people can join us and enjoy these beautiful lessons. Um, like and comment as always so we can be the life of this lesson. All right, guys. So you know there's always a better way for you to learn a new language. And at LRDG, we believe that. Whether you're a newcomer to Canada or just a busy professional looking to get ahead, we are here to help you achieve your goals and dreams, just like we have helped thousands of professionals and countless others to boost their careers and improve their lives through language learning. Now, our unique and personal interactive methods ensure you have all the support you need around the clock. And our team of language learning specialists and IT professionals come from diverse cultures and backgrounds which means you get to choose when it's best for you to learn at your own pace and based off of your own needs. Now, of course, we know firsthand the challenges of learning a new language and especially the stress of being officially tested in it. So we ensure that you pass a 90% mark at every stage of your journey to properly prepare you for that final test, especially the federal exam. If you want to access our personalized training to go even further, you can always book a call with our representatives online and on our website. Please look at the descriptions below. So like I said, if you stick around, there's a special offer. And now we are actually offering a free placement test for you guys if you register with us. So please go ahead and check that email, call us on our website and learn more. All right, beautiful. Those of you who have been with us before, Welcome back. Do you remember what we said last time about present continuous and past continuous? It's about two actions that happen at the same time in the past. One interrupts the other. So while I was walking down the street, I saw someone waving at me or wave at me. Both are actually correct. All right. Welcome, everybody. Please let us know in the chat below. Where are you from? And what brings you here? Now today, I'm assuming you guys either have already moved into Canada or you're thinking about moving to Canada. And I'm gonna help you discuss together, how do we settle down here? How do we find a job? What are the, those important things to find a job? And what things do you need to prepare for to find your perfect position, prepare for that interview? And, of course, as always, there's a few grammar tips waiting for you. So please do share this lesson so that more people can join us and make this a livelier, better lesson. I always interact with you guys, so you will be helping me lead this. Uh, welcome aboard Honduras, Mexico. Welcome on board, everybody. All right. So let's begin this real quick. We're talking, like I said, about settling in Canada and finding a job. So, first of all, is work a noun or a verb? Now, this question might, might look like very basic to some of y'all because you're like, nouns, verbs, who needs this? This is children's stuff. This is child play. Remember that? Child's play, which means it's an idiom, which means it's too easy. This is for kids, basically. Well, you'd be surprised. Actually... Welcome, Colombianas and Colombianos. So we have Honduras, Mexico, Colombia. Oh, wow. Beautiful interactions from Latin America. All the love, you guys. I hope one day to see you here in Montreal in Canada. And hopefully we can pick it up from there. Do visit our website to learn more. Great. Or you can always call us as well. Now, Damil, welcome back. Beautiful. Damil says her husband and herself are learning English because they want to come to Canada. Welcome. I really hope you guys benefit from this. And LRDG is very extensive. We can definitely help you pass those federal scores. For those of you who don't know, in Canada, before you get a job, especially if you're working for the government, there are language requirements. 
we call them levels A, B, and C. So we will definitely help you take your level from language level A, which is the lowest, up the way up to language level C. And we always do that for many, many people. No right across the board. Beautiful stuff. So actually, Taryn Cruz uh, says on Instagram, it is both. And um, I assume it's a she. She is referring to work as both a noun and a verb. Wow, I love it. You are actually absolutely correct. Spot on. That was beautiful. Work is both. Can you guys give me examples? I'll share you some of my own examples too. So, for instance, work as a verb. I would like to work in education. I work in education. This is a verb. There you go. Ah, Taryn, beautiful. Well done. Give me a screen five. Uh -huh. All right. So, how about a noun? Work should not be hard. Or, I prefer a certain kind of work. I prefer. So, prefer is the verb here. What do I prefer? A certain specific kind of work. Work is a noun here. Beautiful. So, Damil says it's a noun. Please be careful. Once again, guys on Facebook, please remember, and on Instagram, please remember to share this class. Share it so more people can join us and we can have a more joyful party here. All right. So, Damil, one more time. It's a noun when you say things like, I prefer work that pays well. Or, I would rather have a job or work that gives me more time to spend with my family. But when you say, I work hard, then it is definitely a verb. All right, you guys. Thank you. So, Taryn gets our high five of the day, number one, on fire. All right, let's continue. I got more things coming up for you right away. What about a job? I said a job before. I said, I, I have a job. My job is to teach English. Our job at LRDG is to help you pick up your English. So what do you guys think? Is job a noun or a verb? Hmm, my job is. Well, actually, Damil says it's a noun. It could be for the previous one, I'm not sure, but this time Damil got it right. There you go. I hope I'm pronouncing your names right. Please forgive me if I'm not. Taryn and Damil, you guys are on fire today. You guys are right. This one is actually a noun. I cannot have job as a verb. No right. What about a living? Let me give you an example of a living. For example, we help professionals advance their language level as a living. I, te I teach English as a living. Easy. I teach English as a living. Welcome on board, everybody, please. If you join us, let me know where you guys are from and welcome on board. So make a living. Make a living. Is that? Or a living. Actually, I have a quick tip for you. Whenever you see a before something, it's probably a noun. Not only that, it's countable, which means I can count it. One, two, three. Oh, Violeta, welcome on board. Where you guys are from, let me know. And you are absolutely right. So this time we have a living means only a noun. It's not both, you guys. Be careful. Let's do some more. Now I want to ask you guys, let's say you come to Canada or even think about where you are from in your home country. What do you have to do to get a job? What do you have to do to get a job? That's my question. And let me show it to you real quick on screen here. What do you have to do to get a job? We have a few basic things that are the same in Canada, in, in Europe or Latin America. It's probably the same steps to get in a job. What do you first have to do? Let me see. 
Hmm. Probably, I would say you have to have the right education. You've got to have or you must have a proper education. Oh, Jeremy, welcome on board, my friend. Long time no see. Actually, Jeremy asks, interview? Well, I would think the same, but hey, let's not jump the gun. You guys remember this? I told you before, if you remember, idioms always boost your score. Idioms always help you. Idioms are your friends. Jump the gun is an idiom. Jump the gun basically means to start midway. Don't start too early. So before the interview, we have to prepare a couple of things here. But thank you so much for your input there, Jeremy. So before the interview, we have to make sure that we have the right qualifications, degree, experience. I have to make sure I have the right qualifications. All right. And by the way, did you know that Canada is one of the most countries in the world with higher education qualifications? I want you to start noticing these sentences, higher education qualifications. So you start using them as well for your language test, whether it was the IELTS, whether it was TOEFL, or for our federal exams. Beautiful. Let me see. Dinky Castro, welcome on board, says I have to improve my language skills. Absolutely. So one more important part there for a job is to improve your language skills. We have to have a certain level of language skills. But you guys from before, remember, we said you don't have to be fluent. Not 100%. Canada does not want you to be 100% fluent. Just enough. That's why the federal exams, you guys who are in here already know that, have three levels, A, B, and C, right? So A is good enough. But if you want to get promoted, you have to improve your language. Good job, Dinky. Well done. You guys, please let me know where you're from. Remember to share. And remember, we do have a surprise for you. If you sign up, it's a free assessment test and more. Please do reach out. Now, let's get back to it. So after I have the right qualifications, and then I need to apply. Let me ask you guys, see if it's any different. Here in Canada, you have the right qualifications. Then you apply. And then you reach the interview, like Jeremy said. How did you get your jobs before? And I'm asking you guys because I know we have people here in Canada and people outside. How did you guys get your jobs? What did you have to do? Do share with us. And please, I'm looking forward to seeing full sentences, correct grammatical sentences. You guys are veterans now. Veterans, which means you come with experience. This is not your first class. Whether it was Jeremy, whether it was Demil, whether it was my good friends at Instagram, you guys have not been here for the first time. So I'm looking for a full sentence. What did you guys have to do when you applied for a job? Let me know. I'll tell you about myself, actually. So I have the qualifications, like a degree, and I have the experience necessary. So when I wanted to apply for work, I actually went online, searched for those vacancies that we post online, and then I submit my CV. And then, like Jeremy said, we go for that interview real quick. And you pass on from there. It's pretty straightforward. You guys, this is another idiom. Pretty straightforward. Demil says, I got a job when I finished. The, please remember the ED after finish because it's in the past. I got a job. Good job with that. Well done. Use the past tense. When I finished my pasanitias at the university. And I wonder what pasantias mean. Let's see. I'll give you extra points if you can go translate what pasantias mean in English. And there you go. Thank you for your input. So we graduate, we get the degree, and then we apply. Beautiful. I think it's the same process everywhere, right? There you go. Good job. Good job. Finished. When I got my degree after I finished that. Well done. Now we're talking. I love the energy. Welcome back. We missed you last week. All right, you guys, let's continue. Now, I want you to take a look at this list real quick here. We have four important things. All of these are important. I want you to type in the chat 
the number of what you think is more important. So number one should be the most important and number four should be the least important. Let's read them together. Prepare a Canada appropriate CV and cover letter. Guys, cover letter is really important here. Get valuable Canadian work experience by volunteering. Let me share my screen real quick so that you can see it too. And here I want to highlight and stress the importance of volunteering. You know what, you guys? In Canada, volunteering really takes you places. Be careful what I'm saying here. I'm, I'm mentioning idiots. Crucial takes you places, which means it's very important. <laughs> Nadia says, I'm learning English and Spanish words today. Yes, international. Welcome on board, everybody. So one more time. Let me actually stop sharing my screen, fix it up for you guys over at Instagram so it's a bit better. See if that can work. I want you to view the whole list. Let me see real quick. I'll fix it up. So you guys, while we're at it, let me read those things for you one more time. Prepare a Canada appropriate CV and cover letter. Get valuable Canadian work experience by volunteering. And number three is review your English and French skills. And this is where LRDG comes in. And finally, check the job skills and qualifications required for jobs in your field. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. So I'm looking for your chats. I want you to order these by what you think is most important to least important. So I'm looking for things like three, one, five, whatever. There's no five here, but you know what I mean. You guys, if you don't know, if you don't know this is our Instagram right there. Please go ahead and order those. So what do you think is most important here? We put that at number one. Do you think getting volunteering experience is more important than reviewing your language skills? Let me see. What about checking for job skills? Is that the most important or the least important? The most important should be at the top. The least important is at the bottom. Beautiful. Welcome on board, everybody. Please, when you join us, let us know where you're from. So. Taryn says, number one is language. Number one is language. You guys on Instagram, you're on fire. Well, let me be honest with you. Language is not really the most important as long as you have working, working level language. If people can understand, if your colleagues and coworkers can communicate language, is only for promotions. If you want to be a manager, if you want to be a supervisor, if you want to be a head of a department, you have to have language. Otherwise, it's not that, I'm sure it's definitely not number one. There should be something more important. What do you guys think? Mad Montreal says, I left Facebook because I see better from Instagram. Oh, for real? Well, whatever works for you. Is there any idiom that says whatever works for you? Winning. Yes, there is. It's called whatever floats your boat. I wish I had a boat here. I could have shown you. Whatever flows your boat. All right. So, you guys, let me see one more time. Prepare a CV. Oh, Karen. Karen on Facebook, you guys. Amazing. Look at what Karen Gomez said. Three, four, one, two. The most important thing is to review your English language skills. Hmm. Well, I guess you guys are winning. This is more than one person who has language at number one, so I'll give it to you. Let's put language at number one. So language is number one, and then check your skills. I would disagree with Karen on three and four. I would say four and three, but hey, maybe I don't know. Maybe because my language is okay, I don't, I don't suffer from that. So you guys know better. I'll agree with it. So language is number one, and then 
check your skills and qualifications for your job because even if you have a good language but not enough skills you won't get the job and then prepare a cv and finally get valuable experience well done well done well karen let me please give you a high five high five uh -huh. all right why is it more important because if you want to volunteer and remember volunteering is important in canada if you want to volunteer you have to have a cv too you need to present your cv somewhere and then they'll let you volunteer karen you're on fire today good job you guys appreciate it all right let's continue with the job search see what else we can find let me share my screen real quick and get this party started now guys i want you to start thinking of work related words work related words mad montreal says three two four one as well good job i agree i love it ha uh, nadia says i need more volunteer experience almost not quite i want to highlight something here nadia i need more volunteering experience with ing be careful remember that volunteer is a verb and i need is a verb also and if you guys remember those of you beautiful people who were with us from the beginning we said verbs are important every english sentence must have one verb and only one verb i cannot have two i cannot have zero beautiful stuff so nadia one more time i need more volunteering experience so that we don't have two verbs beautiful stuff go for it please do what you gotta do do whatever you need in order to progress and go ahead in life all right you guys let's continue so now i want you to remember and think of work related words things that you can use to describe your colleagues co-workers what is the word anybody knows please write it in the chat real quick what is the word that we use to describe someone who does what they say they will do what do you guys think welcome rondan welcome everybody you guys please when you join in as always let me know where you're from remember to share this lesson so that more of your friends and everybody can benefit and we can have a bigger party they say in english there's another idiom i hope you're writing those idioms down the more the merrier which means everybody's happier everything's better with more people all right you guys so let's go back to our question real quick here nadia says is it reliable hmm reliable is an adjective so you got the right form and the right word all right all right all right well done i love it see you guys give me hope when i see people like you so interactive energetic it makes me want to give more so we call someone who want, who always says what they do is reliable which means i can count on them <laughs> all right you see you'll remember it buddy you'll remember it all right so you guys what is the word we use to describe someone who is on time let's see somebody who's on time and i want you to keep in mind while you think of the word someone who's on time these are all important things to have and during the interview to show so when you're going through the interview you must show how are you reliable how you come on time all right and everything we learn you can use in an interview there you go oh lucero at instagram you guys are on fire says what is the word we use to describe someone who's on time punctual you got it you got it beautiful punctual repeat after me at home punctual punctual means is always on time he comes on time delivers his work on time or their work on time there you go you got it you got it beautiful i love it but i'm sorry you guys lucero gets the clap for this one she guessed it first all right one more so reliable punctual you gotta show these things in an interview what else what do we call a person who can change and adjust 
to different situations well. So they give you different tasks, different situations, and you adjust. Is this important? Oh, absolutely important. This is 100% important because work will always change. There'll always be new demands. There'll always be new tasks, different workloads, right? So we have to be what? Anybody? All right. Well, I guess I'll give you this one. Let's move on. This is called flexible. Flexible. You've got to be flexible here, my friends. You got to be flexible. So one more time, remember to show how reliable, punctual, and flexible you are during a job interview. And I think this goes for Canada and other countries as well. Now, I'm still in the same area, but I want to ask you the question differently. If I am able, which means if I can, if I am able to put things in order of importance, which means exactly like what you guys did before. Those of you who were here before, no, new ones, welcome on board. Before we ordered, right? We said, which one is more important to have? Which is less important to have? What do we call someone who can organize things based off of importance? Hmm, it starts with a P. There's a word for this. It starts with a P. If you guys know, let me know in the chats right away. Welcome on board. I have Steffi Yunus. Welcome on board. I have Lala Michi and Jean Carlos. I hope I'm pronouncing your names right. Welcome on board, everybody. Please tell us where you're from. And remember, we have a free gift for you if you go check our website. And we have a question waiting for you. Those of you who just joined us, let me share it with you one more time. If I am able to put things in order of importance, I am able to something that starts with P. Do I have any guess? Uh oh. All right. Well, this one's on me, you guys. I'm on the same team as you. We're in this together. We say prioritize comes from priority. Priority is what is most important. Welcome on board. John is from Peru. Welcome on board, everybody. Lots of love to Latin America. All right, you guys. So prioritize is putting things by order of importance, like we just did before. One more question before we move on to something else. Medellin, Colombia. Welcome on board. Oh, my God. You guys will love it if you come to Canada, especially in summertime. Wintertime is going to be too cold for y'all. We want to go and travel there. <laughs> Anyways, if I get caught up on too many details, do you know anybody like this? They look at the very detail. They will not do anything unless it's perfect and spend too much time on one thing. What, what can I be called? I might be called what? Something related to perfect. Some adjective from perfect. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you know anybody like that? They don't do, they don't submit their work. They wait until the very last minute because they want it to be perfect. What do we call those people? An adjective. It's a per. Let me see. I'll give you a minute or more to think about it. And if you can, think of something or someone that is like this. And remember to tell them this. Tell them, I think they call you a per. All right, all right. Well done, Karen. Karen says, a perfectionist. Whoa, a perfectionist. Correct. Perfectionist is actually one of those things. Okay, let me stop at this and remind you guys. These are all things you want to have in a job interview, except for perfectionists. We don't want perfectionists here. We think that a job done well or okay, we can also say mediocre from medium. Mediocre means, meh, it's okay. Nothing special. It's better than no job submitted at all. So I don't want it to be perfect on your computer sitting at home. I want it to be okay and on the spot. So you guys, perfectionism is something you don't want to do. All right. Good job, you carry. Well done. Well done. Oh, wow. I think you guys are enjoying this. Let's continue. Do one more. 
Now I'm going to do something else with you. What do you guys think are personal qualities other than what we said you need to get a job? I know for a fact, for example, you need to be energetic. Good job, you guys. Perfectionist, you got it. All right. You need to be energetic. You need to be dedicated. You need to have passion. You need to show passion. Be hmm, Basically, love what you do. But what else? We have an endless list. What qualities do you need personally to get a job? And guys, right now, I'm looking for adjectives. Remember that. Violetta says responsible. Correct. I agree. You have to be responsible. Did we mention something similar to responsible earlier? Oh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. We mentioned reliable. Who remembers reliable? Reliable is you can depend on them. Dependable. Also responsible. So what's the difference between reliable and responsible? What do you guys think? Good. I love it. I love it. Keep it up. Keep it up. Responsible is takes responsibility. Takes initiative. Reliable is if you give him work, you can count on it. You know they will do a good job. Beautiful. Good job. Thank you, Violetta. I appreciate it. Giancarlo says efficiency on Instagram. Efficiency. Efficiency means to do the right job well to carry it perfectly i love it good job buddy karen says honesty uh oh we have two right and one wrong karen give me your attention for two minutes honesty is correct you have to be honest you can't lie lie about your work that's not a good way to do efficiency correct well done good job however productive honesty is a noun efficiency is a noun so if you have two nouns let's remove productive because it's an adjective and turn it into a noun what can i say productivity so you need productivity noun you must be productive adjective good job oh karen also gave us another one. Oh, thank you so much look at you you're on fire today leadership I got to show leadership. I agree. Leadership. We have leadership, responsibility, reliability, dependability. I love it. Okay. You guys are ready. Just you need to do is sub apply and come over here. We need you in Canada. I think you already told me what are the good employee qualities. Thank you, guys. You've been great. Now, all of the time when we were saying those things, we were using a certain grammar structure. And you know, there's always grammar involved. How can I say you must be something? You have to be efficient. You have to be honest. You don't have to be fluent. In English, you don't have to be fluent in English, right? What else? Give me more ideas in the chat. We said something that you don't have to be or that you shouldn't. You shouldn't do, which is be a perfectionist. You don't have to be a perfectionist, right? Let's see. How can I do this as a grammar rule? What am I saying? What am I using when I say that? You have to be... You don't have to be. Again, let me go back to my slide real quick. I love your interactions, you guys. Hmm. All right. I'll let you look at the grammar rule while I go back. Nadia says you have to be compassionate. Well, absolutely. Lucero says lazy. Can you please explain more, Lucero, on Instagram? What do you mean by lazy? Do I have to be lazy? Oh, Karen. Karen's on fire today. Karen's already answering you there. She says, you do not have to be lazy. Absolutely. Actually, Karen, I'm going to take it one step further and say, you cannot be 
lazy. That's impossible. It's a red line. Nadia, go ahead. You're on fire today. You don't have to be rude. Yes, ma'am. You cannot be rude. Why should you be rude? No need for that. People work better when they're happy. Karen says you have to be a honest person. Uh-oh. Karen, one more time. If you look at the screen on Facebook, you can see your comment. You have to be a honest person or an honest person. This is a bit different because in English, unlike French, in French, we never pronounce the H, right? But in English, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Here, we don't. We don't say honest. We say honest. Similarly, let's say, think of the word herbs. Think of herbs. Herbs like plants. We don't say herbs. We say herbs. That's why I cannot say a herb. I say an herb. Similarly, you have to be an honest person. Good job. Nice try. I can see you guys improving your English from the first time we came in together online. All right, all right, beautiful. So let's take a look here. What do I have? It says here, for me to get a job as a teacher, I have to take my employer's considerations into account. I have to think, what do they want? What do they care about? This is what take into account means. I have to think, what do they care about? What do they want? And then give them what they need. Otherwise, they'll give me the sack. Give someone the sack means fire them. They'll give me the sack. Go home. We don't want you no more. All right. I don't want to be given the sack. That's why. Now, look at this. How important is my ability to use computers? I have to think of that as well. How important is my ability to use computers? Hmm. I want you to be careful to my answer here. I have to know how to use a computer to a certain level, up to a certain extent, right? Up to a certain degree. I have to know how to use a computer up to a certain extent, to a certain degree, okay? Now I want you to think of things that you need, skills that you have to have for your job, guys. All right, welcome on board, everybody. Please let us know where you're from when you come in here. Don't forget to share this lesson so that more people can join. The more, the merrier. And remember, we have a free gift for you on our website. Just let us know, check it out, and reach out. Okay, look at this one. Is it more important or less important than my sense of what to wear? Mm. Especially young people have this problem. They may have the skill required. They may have the necessary skill required, but they don't have any sense of appropriate, not fashion, we call this dress code. Okay? Dress code. I, I hope you're taking notes, you guys. These words are important. Every time I tell you this is an idiom, take note, write it down, and start using it like jump the gun. Difference between day and night. Okay? Beautiful. So, actually, in my line of work as a teacher, having I have to have a dress code or a sense of dress code as much as I know computers. Is it more important or less important? I would say it is as important as computer skills. Same thing. Less than, below. More than, above. As important as means the same. All right, you guys, let's continue with something more fun, things you'll enjoy. Now, what do you guys think? Those of you who are already in Canada, I wonder what you guys think. What advice can you give to someone who's looking for a job here in Canada? So we talked about a few things here what to do to prepare for an interview. How, what would you tell someone coming here to work? Let me see. Well, first of all, you guys said it. 
prepare your language. Prepare your language. Prepare your CV, your resume. Look for volunteering opportunities. Right? You know this already. Look for volunteering opportunities. Look for things to do. And make sure you have the proper degree requirements. And by the way, when you come to Canada, we will help you. There are organizations, companies like us and others will help you get your CV in order, will help you write your cover letter and take you for the further step. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Now, I want to ask you guys, is it easy or hard for you in your home countries to find a job? Here in Canada, it is relatively easy. I want you to remember those words. Relatively easy to find a job. What about you in your country? Is it easy or hard for you guys to find a job, to find work? And why? Once again, I want you to visit our website. Give us a call whenever you want. We have a free placement test for you guys. And we can guide you on ways to improve your language skills in a way that matches the Canadian requirements. Okay, beautiful stuff. I love it. So back to you guys. Is it easy or hard? For example, in my home country before I came to Canada, I was actually in Dubai, and in Dubai, it's also quite easy to find a job. There's a lot of work around. All you need to do really is apply and go to the interview. If you pass, it's as easy as that. It's as easy as A, B, C. It's a piece of cake. These are two idioms. I'll repeat. It is as easy as A, B, C. It's a piece of cake. It's a walk in the park. Use those when you speak English, you guys, okay? It'll help you out. Violetta says, it is not always easy. Ah, uh, why is that? Would you mind telling us a bit more? I'm kind of curious. Man Montreal says, in Venezuela, it's required to have experience to work. Be careful there. It is required to have experience, right? And this is the question, right? This is the, the circle. How do you get experience if you need experience to work, <laughs> right? That's why here we actually go volunteer. We work for free to gain experience, boom, and then get our careers going. Good luck. Try to see if you have volunteering opportunities in Venezuela, although I think it's a bit hard there for now. Let me see. So, Valenta says, there aren't many opportunities as there are here. Hmm, right. So, here in Canada, we probably have more opportunities. You're right. Because it's a large country with few people, with a, with a lesser population. I think so. Come to Canada, you guys. Try it out. We really do welcome people. We really do have work opportunities for everyone. Give it a shot. Let's see. Karen says, currently, no, because uh, lots of companies closed due to the situation we are facing right now. However, it was easier before than nowadays. Oh, okay. I can definitely feel you here because this is a situation where the whole world is actually suffering from, right? Now, I'll keep continuing wishing you good luck. You guys have to be flexible remember we learned this to change with the times change with the times you have to be flexible change is not always a bad thing sometimes it's a it's a positive improvement hmm all right actually i'm gonna give you two thumbs up for that well done i took a look and you wrote a whole sentence perfectly well good job karen i love it absolutely all right, let's continue. We're almost done with the lesson, so I hope you guys can hang in there. I'm also curious about this point, to be honest with you guys. Considering the current situation and what's going on in life, is it common to have only one job for life in your countries? 
for instance, if you want to compare it to here, here not many people actually have the same job all across their life. We usually hold jobs here two to five years on average, two to five years. And then we either get promoted or we go find another work, another job that pays more. Because the concept here is that work in general is for the benefits. And when I say benefits, I mean in Canada, we take things into consideration like time you spend with your family, not only how much money you make, your hours that you work so these are the benefits your medical is covered do you have dental do you have any other medical benefits so we do take these things into consideration right all right now i want to go ahead and give you one last thing before a game i want to give you one last thing about an interview so this is a game you guys if you have an interview scheduled for two o'clock when should you arrive 10 minutes early 10 minutes late right on time or 10 minutes early so do you have to be there a half an hour beforehand 10 minutes late you have to be right on time or 10 minutes early anaya sophia welcome on board but you almost missed the class this is the end of it please come the day after tomorrow on thursday almost an hour before now we'll also be live there maybe you can catch it from the beginning all right nadia says 10 minutes early violetta says d 10 minutes early you guys are right no need to show up half an hour early because if you show up half an hour early this actually sends the wrong message and i want you to remember those idioms we call it psh, psh, shoot yourself in the foot you shoot yourself in the foot if you come in half an hour early because it shows you don't have anything else in your life right it shows you don't have anything else in your life you're coming here you have half an hour to waste that's not good 10 minutes is good enough good job good job buddies i love it let's do one more let's do one more interview questions what is the best answer to why do you want this job? Madmont R says it's always better to be early than late. Absolutely. You are spot on. Absolutely. It's always better to be early than to be late. But not too early. Too early you'd be shooting yourself in the foot. All right. Do you tell him I really need the money at the moment? Karen, I assume you are not answering that in your interviews because this may not be the best answer. A, no. I really need the money at the moment or I feel I could do a good job for this company. Or C, I know the company gives its staff huh, lots of vacation days every year. And don't be surprised, people do say some of those things sometimes. So if you know better, some people don't. Let's see. Let's go back to the question real quick here. I know the company gets us to have lots of vacations every year. Uh, I would disagree, actually, Karen, because uh, it was the last question. Got it. It was answering the last questions. I think 10 minutes early is good enough. What do you guys think of the second question? Thank you, everybody, for making this lesson beautiful, lively. We're almost done. Hang in there. We still have a few more things to go over before we leave you for this lesson. So, you guys, let me see. Uh, Layla says, hello, Rafi. Hello, Layla. Welcome on board. This is our first live session with you. I don't believe we've seen you here before. But thank you for the nice words and comments. So you guys, one more time, let's take a look. What do you think is the best answer? So they're asking you, why do you want this job? There you go. All right, Karen is back on fire one more time. Awesome. It's the second one, actually. I feel I could do a good job at this company. You got it. You got it. Why is it, though? Why is it, though? You can't say 
I'm here because you guys give good money or good vacations. You can't say I'm here because I need the money. So why do you have to say I feel like I can do a good job? Let's see. Madman R says, be no doubt, never say, <laughs> absolutely, never say the first one. You got that right. There you go. Layla also says, I feel I could do a great job at this company. Absolutely. Why? Because you guys remember, we need to show what's in it for them too. They're hiring us. They're committing to us, right? Because when you work with someone, you become part of the family. So you need to show what do you bring to the table? You see that? How can you help out? And they will also, of course, help you out. But never say you need the money because that's too desperate and nobody wants that. All right, you guys, let's do one more. I think we have two more questions for today's lesson. Let's see what you guys think. If you are waiting a long time before the interview, let's say they leave you waiting. What do you do? Should you A, go out for coffee and come back later? B, walk around and make a lot of noise to let people know, hey, you're here. You guys are late for my interview. What's going on? Do you make noise? C, read a book or a magazine while you wait. Or D, simply go ahead, go over to somebody and complain. Tell them you guys what kind of a company is this you tell me come on time i'm here 10 minutes early and now you're leaving me waiting what kind of company is this why should i work for you this is what it means to complain all right you guys welcome everyone i have jacaria i hope i'm pronouncing your names right please forgive me if i'm not and i have Rule. you guys you are a bit late we're almost done with this lesson but that's okay if you can come back the day after tomorrow on Thursday, we will be starting one hour from now, which means one hour before. And we'll be ending just the same way as now. Okay, let's go back to the question, see what you guys have to say. Karen on fire again. Karen says, go out for a coffee, come back later. I appreciate that. Now, if you go out for a coffee, you might be risking something here. You might be risking that they call your name and you're not there, what do you do then? What if they call your name? Hey, Karen, where's Karen for the interview? Wasn't she supposed to be here? Oh, I'm sorry, she left. Whoops. No, that's not what we want. Personally, and I'm an avid reader, you guys, I hope you're taking notes. It's called avid, A-V-I-D, avid reader, which means you read a lot. I'm an avid reader, and I'm a proponent for reading while you're there. Number one, you relax your mind, you rest your mind, and number two, you actually maximize the benefit. You learn as well while you're waiting there, so it's not time wasted. But definitely don't make noise or complain to someone because maybe they're busy doing something else. All right, you guys, our last question for today. When the interview is finished, what should you do? Should you A, ask the interviewer if you got the job? And some people do do that. Or B, say, I really need the job. Or C, say, thank you to the interviewer. Or D, telephone the interviewer when you arrive home. All right, you guys, let's see. Madmont R says, we should take advantage from time. So option C, great. Actually, almost right i would say we should take advantage of the time be careful be careful you guys one more time when you're saying here take advantage from it doesn't make sense that's wrong i want you to forget it never say that again so one more time take advantage of all right otherwise you got it. Absolutely. Take advantage of uh, the time. Finally, you guys, I'm looking forward to the last answer for today. What do you think we should do at the end of the interview? Karen, one more time. Oh, my. Oh, my. Karen is on fire. Just simply say thank you to the interviewer and go. No need 
to ask him did i get the job no need to call him back later some people like to check in after two weeks which is fine but basically at the interview once the interview is over all you have to do is thank the interviewer so similarly you guys i want to thank you today you guys made my lesson real nice i enjoyed it remember the more the merrier you guys have been putting your input put it in the chat interacting i really really appreciate it thank you so much for making our day and remember we're going back live on thursday same time six eastern standard so an hour before now and it's an hour long class i have new tips and new things for you i hope to see you there thank you so much and till later Take care, visit our website until Thursday. Bye-bye, you guys.